This is uh, the Joomla Explained. It's easy as one, two, three today. Now, it's not quite that easy, but I'm going to try and boil the basics of Joomla down to three simple uh, steps or approaches that we can take. And I'm going to cover each one in each hour. The three that I'm going to cover, uh, I will share in just a minute. My name is Rod Martin. My Twitter, Skype, Yahoo, Pinterest, you name it, I'm Rod Martin pretty much everywhere. Uh, my email address is rod at OS training. And uh, don't, don't email me for support. Uh, I will not answer you because I can't. Uh, I'm on the road pretty much three or four weeks a month uh, doing this. And I do live training with OS training for a living. If you watch any of our videos, uh, more often than not, you'll also hear my voice. I get really monotonous, and I'm really sorry about that. So uh, that's not me. Um, but that's, uh, that's my contact information. I was born in this country, and I grew up in this city. And I do carry one of these. When I was 10, we moved to this country. And I lived in this city. And so I carry one of those. Uh, Nine years ago, we moved to this country. I live in the thriving metropolis of Dillsboro, Indiana. <laughs> All right. If you look up redneck in the dictionary, it is not North Georgia mountains. It is Dillsboro, Indiana. Uh, there's an armed militia 15 minutes from my house. There, it, it's just a fascinating place for a good Canadian boy to live. Uh, I'm a, it's about 40 minutes outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. And so Dillsboro, Indiana is, is one of those, uh, like I said, thriving metropolises of about 300 people. And uh, we, we, uh, we like living out in the country, but wow, what a culture shock it was for me. Um, just so you know, I do have one of these. I want you to know I'm legal. And uh, when I teach in Washington, D.C., I, I leave that slide up for just a few minutes to let that sink in to all of the, the government people that I'm talking to. Uh, this is my family. Been married 26 years. My wife, Aww. Teresa. Yeah, isn't that cute? Uh, my daughter, Rebecca, is an EMT firefighter, and uh, she's working on her medic program at University of Cincinnati. My son is, uh, I think we've finally found himself. You know, remember that those days with your kids? Yeah, I think so. He's, uh, he's finishing up a, an associate's degree, and he's going to finish up his uh, BA at, U, at UC as well. A couple of years ago, we asked uh, my daughter's boyfriend to join us in the picture. This is him. <laughs> you can see that I'm vertically challenged, and he is not. <laughs> Six foot nine, 90 mile an hour fastball in high school, but all he ever wanted to do was be a fireman, so that's what he does. Uh, he is a lieutenant in the local fire department, and he's a neat guy. Uh, this is my daughter fighting fire. She's very intense about it, and uh, really proud of her for doing that. Uh, this is my son finding himself in 2012. He was a, <laughs> he's a lifeguard at a uh, camp down in Middle Othian, Texas for five years, and like I said, we think he's found himself. I love these guys, and just in case you don't know what sport that is, it's this one. I uh, guess you guys don't have hockey down here anymore, do you? Sorry about that. Go yeah. no, Winnipeg. I uh, love these guys, and yeah, I know, you can stone me later. Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't mind leaving home so much. His name is Riley. Uh, <laughs> he'll kill you deader than dead if you walk in my door. So he's our killer watchdog. Um, I work for open source training, or OS training, as you know. Uh, Steve is the founder and principal yeah. owner. I'm a part owner, and I'm the director of training. Uh, I've done about uh, 300, almost 400 of the online lessons at OS training. I also own a company called Navigate Tomorrow, which is just a small design company that I did before I joined OS Training. I've kept it going just so we build about three or four sites a year so I can keep current. Um, I've worked with a bunch of contractors. It's, it's not a big going concern anymore, but it keeps me involved in actually site building and developing, which I think is important because my primary role is a trainer and I want to be able to do and teach. You know, not the whole adage about those who do, do, those who can't teach type thing. Um, I've built over 100 sites in Joomla 1.0 to 3.0, 3.x uh, at this point. So, uh, And we're here today to cover uh, Joomla. So let's talk about uh, Joomla 1, 2, and 3. Joomla 1, and that's what we're going to cover in this part of the day, is content. And everything starts in a content management system with content. With respect to all the graphic designers in the room, you don't matter yet. Uh, you don't matter 
uh, at all at the beginning of a Joomla project. Now, you do matter, don't get me wrong, and you matter a lot because the look and feel of a, of a website is obviously pretty important. In fact, it's always the first question I get, right? I get a new client, we're talking away, and he says, so what's the site going to look like? My first response is, I don't care. Because that's not what's <coughs> important at this moment. It is important. But what's really critical is content. And the foundation of a content management system is getting your content right and getting it in so your users can get the information they want. In the second hour, we're going to talk about features. And in Joomla, features are called extensions. There are five kinds of extensions. We'll cover them all. And in the third hour, we're going to talk about design and ACL, but mostly about design and what that means, layouts, templates, and things like that. So Joomla, it's as easy as one, two, and three. So I'm going to introduce Joomla as a content management system, and then I'm going to talk about the installation and content just real quickly. So what is Joomla? Well, if you were here earlier, you know that it's a content management system. A CMS is designed to make it easy so people who don't know PHP, MySQL, and, and HTML, and CSS can actually keep their websites up to date. They can build them and keep them up to date, and that's what you want to do. So a 30,000 foot view of a CMS looks like this. You have your content, your text, your links, the images you insert, all of those things, and that is stored in a database. You don't actually have files on your desktop. I'm so old, I started with Microsoft front page. Anybody else in the room? Thank you. Okay, some of you are as old as me. Front page 97 was a great thing because it was actually the first kind of visual interface to build a website. Uh, quickly, I moved on from that, however, to uh, raw static HTML, and then I discovered Dreamweaver. And Dreamweaver, for many of us, was, boy, that go-to software that we laid out our pages in set up our index files and our HTML files and upload them to the internet. Okay, there are no files in a content management system. There's nothing on your desktop that you upload to get your content online. It's all stored in a database and there's really good reasons for that. Because your content is completely separate from your design in a content management system. And in Joomla, they're called templates. And the reason this is important is because, let's go back to that Dreamweaver illustration. In Dreamweaver, if I wanted to change the logo on my site, the client gives me a new version of the logo, and they have 7,000 pages, which one of my clients does, uh, suddenly I'm editing 7,000 pages in Dreamweaver. Unless I'm really smart and have used includes, which I probably wasn't in the beginning, and now I'm uploading 7,000 pages to the web. Wow, that's a nightmare. In a content management system, <coughs> I upload it into the template, click save, and it's instantly changed across the entire website. So when I'm changing my template, I'm not touching my content. When I'm touching my content, I'm not touching my template or my design. And finally, the third part of this triangle is the framework or the CMS itself the database, the PHP, the Ajax, the JavaScript, all that stuff that goes into it. So when someone comes to your website and they say, show me the About Us page, Joomla says, oh, they want the content from that part of the database. They want that design applied to it, and they want it to show up in this browser window in about a hundredth of a second. Joomla goes and starts putting all that together and shoving it out to the browser. Now, that's caching aside for just a minute, but that's exactly how it works. So, there are no files you upload. There's nothing to change on your desktop. Joomla is a completely online system, and therefore it works on Mac, PC, anything with a browser, you can operate your Joomla website. The Joomla code started as Mambo in 2000, and like a good Baptist church, they split in 2005. And uh, uh, Mambo became Joomla, and uh, Mambo has kind of died, and Joomla has really taken off. It's 100% free, as Vic said this morning. I didn't know what Vic was presenting, so I'll go through some of these quickly, because you've already heard most of this. Uh, it's entirely run by volunteers, runs about 3% of the web, and over 35 million downloads, as you heard earlier. Some really great websites use Joomla. 
Linux, the Eiffel Tower, Guggenheim. If you remember the iPad commercials from a few years ago, the first thing they showed was the Guggenheim website. That's a Joomla website. And it still looks great on an iPad. Uh, IKEA, General Electric, uh, again, over a bunch of governments. And uh, so why would we use Joomla? Well, it's easy. Er, it's much easier than learning HTML, PHP, MySQL. Uh, I wrote a content management system in 2000. It certainly didn't become very popular. Uh, only one person used it. And they used it for six years, the company that I was working for at the time. Uh, it's very quick to build a site in Joomla. Once you get good at this, you can crank out websites in almost no time at all uh, versus trying to build them from scratch. I was with Pfizer, or not Pfizer, sorry, uh, Wiley Publishing last year. And uh, with Wiley Publishing, I was going through their uh, micro sites that they build for all of their products. And they weren't getting it. They were saying, I don't think Joomla is the right thing. I said, look, show me one of your micro sites. And they did. I said, go to lunch. And they did. When they got back from lunch, I had built their site in Joomla. They couldn't tell the difference in an hour. Now, I'm pretty good at it, and I cheated a little bit with the template because I used Artisteer, and it got me most of the way. And so I was able to build a template in 15 minutes, and I essentially built their entire site in, in an hour. They walked back in the room and said, well, where's the site? I said, there it is. They said, no, that's not. That's our site. I said, look at the URL. And I promised I hadn't cheated. It was a fully blown Joomla website. It's cheaper to run a, to create a Joomla site in most cases. Uh, again, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on a content management system and just get the raw data or the raw program that you still have to develop. Uh, again, here's the timeline for the versions of Joomla. We're on 2.5 as far as the long-term release. Uh, the next long-term release is Joomla 3.5, and hopefully that's going to come out this year. Uh, we saw Joomla 3 in September of 2012. If I was going to start building a site right now, I would start in Joomla 3, not Joomla 2. Um, if, as long as the modules and all the extensions that I need are already there in Joomla 3, because that would save me. Uh, if you're on Joomla 1.5, migrate now, as Vic said earlier this morning. So Joomla is as easy as 1, 2, 3. Let's talk about how easy it is to install Joomla. Uh, I don't know where you host, but I don't care uh, anything about your installation because what comes first in Joomla is the idea of planning. Now, the first step in getting a good Joomla site is to think this through and plan your site well. That means looking at your content, taking a content audit, understanding how you're going to categorize your content. And by the end of this morning, you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm saying. But planning out your content planning out your layouts, planning out your design, and how the users are going to interact. Because if you don't plan well, you're going to look like the guy in this video. And I don't want to blow you away with the audio. It's a big step in your life. And great thing. Yeah, this is a great, great thing. We for us, it you know, worked out good at the time when we got married. It, um, I was kind of pressured into it, but um, I'm glad I did that. And, uh, well, I was pressured into getting married. Well, well I, I didn't mean to bring up it. I'm just saying it was, it was a tough time. I didn't really want to get married at the time. What? <laughs> No, man. Getting mad. I didn't mean it. I love you, but you guys, listen, good luck with you, man. Yeah, dude, good luck with yours. I, so apparently the microphone wasn't on. I apologize, but now it is. So I'll try not to be too loud. Yeah, good luck with your marriage, dude. Uh, your website will turn out like his marriage if you don't plan what you're going to say. I'm serious now? No. So uh, that's uh, America's Funniest Home Videos, obviously, and uh, that poor guy just didn't think through. When you're building your Joomla site, one of the things I recommend before you even install it is to plan out your site. Now, we've got some resources at OS Training. There's gobs of resources out on the web. There's some good books out there on the counter I saw this morning. So take some time to think that through before you uh, actually uh, you know, dive in and install. One of the things you want to research is the extensions that you might want to use. And again, you'll know more about that by the end of this morning. So there are four ways to install Joomla. 
Uh, an easiest way is if you go out to HostGator, HostMonster, Bluehost, DreamHost, or one of those hosting companies, get a $5 a month account, and they all have the one-click installation called uh, Fantastico or something like that, right? Now, that's not going to be necessarily the best place to keep your Joomla website if it gets busy. If it gets to be very popular, shared hosting is terrible. So, again, uh, that's one option. It's not the one I recommend, but it's there for you. You can always manually install Joomla at a web host, and that's not very hard at all. And since you have a month of access to OS training after today, we've got videos that can show you how to do that. You can get Joomla in the cloud by going to demo.joomla.org, and uh, you can get a, a quick website there. Again, not a bad way to go. My preferred method to learn uh, a piece of software is to have it on my own computer so I can play with it whether I'm online or not. So you can use a desktop uh, version. If you're on a Mac, you can download something called MAMP, uh, which is Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. If you're on Windows, you can download WAMP, which is Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Or a third option that is actually really, really good is Bitnami has um, their own complete installation of Joomla. You download it, you install it, and away you go with a Joomla website. The, the advantages, of course, of all of those are they're on your computer. It's like you're working on the web, but it's secure, it's local, and you don't have to be connected to the internet to do that. This is the Bitnami window. There's the uh, URL that you can use. Now, again, I'm going to give you all of these slides, so don't feel like you have to kill yourself to, uh, to write everything down here. Uh, but feel free to ask questions as we go, because otherwise you'll be comatose by the end of the three hours. Uh, and uh, so here's a quick video that shows you how to install using the Bitnami. I've already downloaded it. Uh, you double click on it uh, to open it. It installs really quickly. It, uh, you select what language you want to use. You click Next. You turn off the uh, sample data if you don't want it, otherwise it'll install sample data for you. You click Next. You can uh, choose where you want to put it. You give it a username and a password. You give it a site name. You click Next. You can set up your email if you want. I wouldn't do that on a local machine. You click Next. You don't want to learn more about their hosting because then you'll get on their email list and it takes forever. And about two minutes later, you've got a fully blown Joomla website sitting on your desktop ready to go. I click OK. I can read all of their stuff. Click my access, my Bitnami Joomla stack, and there's my website. Now, I didn't install the sample data, so it's pretty boring. If I click on the, or if I just add the word administrator to the URL, and I log in with my credentials, this is the back end, back end and it is a regular Joomla website. There's nothing different about it than you, if you would install it anywhere else. It is a great way to play and practice, and I recommend you do that. Don't play or practice on your live website. It's just a thought, okay? Because when you play or practice on your live site, of course, it's live to the world, and you probably don't want to do that. Uh, using MAMP or WAMP, it's pretty much the same. When you install MAMP, it installs just like a regular piece of software. You have to set up a blank database, so that's the only manual part of this. You open up the, you click on the PHP info, click on database, and set up a blank database. You have to upload the Joomla zip file to the directory that you've indicated where you want your websites to be. You unzip it and rename it to whatever you want. And I called mine J3 Demo. And that's just the folder where your site resides. The nice thing with MAMP and WAMP, you can create thousands of Joomla sites right on your desktop. With Bitnami, you're limited to one. Uh, we have a, a couple of videos on this on OS training as well, where you can learn how to do this. It's, it's actually not that hard. Believe me, once you've done it once, the rest become really easy. So this is the Joomla installation screen. I give my site name, the description, my admin email, and a few of the login credentials. I give it the username, password, and database name that I set up just a few minutes ago. And because I'm local on my own machine using MAMP, it's root and root, which you would never, ever, ever do on a live site, right? 
Uh, and I actually use admin for my password on here, which again is pretty evil. You wouldn't, again, it's local, so it's, it's completely safe. I can install the sample data. All of these need to be green, and they always are with MAMP. If you ever try and install Joomla on your own somewhere else, and any of those are red, that needs to be corrected at your web host before you continue. Once you've installed it, you remove the installation folder, click on administrator, put your username and password in there, and you're in the back end of your Joomla website. Joomla websites have a front end and a back end. Slash administrator, by default, is the way you would get to the back end, and then you'd log in there. So that's as simple as it gets. There's several ways to install Joomla. The easiest, by far, is get your uh, cheap hosting and use Fantastico. Again, not the best if your site's going to get big. But if you just want to practice and play, I recommend the down, the getting the Bitnami, or if you're a little bit more technically inclined, using uh, WAMP or MAMP. And then you can build literally a thousand websites right on your desktop. If you want to move that, then there are a great extension, and I'll talk about that in the second hour. It's very, very simple to move it from your own local machine up to the internet wherever you're going to end up hosting your sites. So that's, I do develop a lot of sites that way, depending on the client. If the client wants to follow along with the process, then I do it online. If it's something that is just for me, I probably will just do it on my desktop and export it out wherever I want. When my site, when I finally do get my site installed, this is the back end or the administrator interface. Let me just go through this really quickly. You'll notice that there is an update now link, and one of the great things about the new Joomla system in Joomla 3 is if there is an update, it tells you. One of the rules with Joomla is if there's an update, uh, go ahead and do it, because we want to keep our sites up to date. I'll talk about more about that in the third hour. Across the top, and I, I, I know this will maybe a little bit difficult to see from the back, we have a system, user, menus, content, component, extensions, and help menus. And those are the main menus that you'll use in building your Joomla site. Uh, system has all of the global configuration and system stuff, database stuff, uh, users, of course. And then uh, menus and content is what I'll talk about for the rest of this hour as we build our content of our Joomla site. So we install Joomla, and the next thing we worry about is content, because everything about a content management system starts right there with the idea of getting your content into your site and getting it really well organized, not worrying about look and feel, not worrying about all the fancy stuff yet, just getting your content in. So let's talk about the content workflow. The content workflow in Joomla is cache. And this comes out of Steve's uh, best-selling Joomla Explain book, Categorize, Add, and Show. We, uh, we had a, uh, in Joomla 1.5, has anybody used Joomla 1.5? Okay, one person. Um, yeah, I, I built dozens of sites on Joomla 1.5. And the problem was the categorization system was split into two, sections and categories. And then you added articles, and then you added menus. The problem with that was it spelled scam. Sections, categories, add, and menus. Yeah, not articles and menu. That was a bad analogy. So we've gone with cat. That was you're supposed to laugh at that point. Do I do I need to give you do I need to give you those kind of hints when I need you to? Okay, I'll I'll try and do better at that. Categorize, add, and show. You've got your content for your website, and you've started to organize that content. The first thing in Joomla that Joomla wants is for you to set up your categories. What are the different sections of my website based on the content that I'm going to have? And this is a process you need to think through. And honestly, most people, yeah, yeah, this is a bit of a struggle at the beginning. But the better you do this, the harder you work this through, the better your site will be as from a content perspective. So figure out the categories of content. And depending on the site, you know, that could be dozens of different things. If this is a news type site, then your categories could be, you know, news, sports, weather. And then a subcategory of sports could be uh, football, hockey. Of course, I'm Canadian, so hockey comes before football. Uh, hockey, football, soccer, because we're here in America, we call soccer, soccer, not football. And uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, again, a subcategory of hockey could be professional hockey uh, or NHL. 
and uh, you know, minor league hockey, OHL, CHL, AHL. And under NHL, you can have all the divisions. Are you getting my point? Unlimited nested categories. And the more you categorize your content, the more defined you can make the layouts. So the first thing you think through is categories. After you set up your categories, and I suggest that you do that, just set them all up as you go because you've already done your planning, you also set up uh, media folders for your images that reflect the categorization structure. Once you've done that, then you can start adding your articles. All content in Joomla out of the box is our articles. Now there are other content managers in Joomla and I'm going to talk about those during the second hour when I talk about extensions or features. But out of the box, Joomla comes with just articles, a title and a body. And now we've got some extra fields for images and summaries and things like that. But you, after you've categorized, you add your articles. Now, you can have un uncategorized articles. And some websites, that's fine. Uh, I built uh, the site for my accountant last year. A pretty tiny site, nothing big. It's just him, his daughter, and a couple of other people. Again, Dillsboro, Indiana, right? So we just left all of the articles uncategorized. We didn't need massive categories because there were only about 10 articles on the whole site. You know, the About Us page, our history page, uh, some tips about financial planning page. Uh, you know, that was about it, right? Nothing fancy. So we just left them as uncategorized, and that's okay too. So categorize, add, and then we show with the menu structure. The menu system, more often than not, reflects your categorization. Uh, it doesn't have to, but it can. So categorize, add, and show. So let me give you a for instance. If we were building a little town site called Joomlaville, you might have four categories of content. About us, attractions, festivals, and transportation. This comes out of Steve's book, and you can tell he's British because it's transport. Here in America, we say transportation. Really need to update that slide. Uh, so I would set up those categories, and I'd set up media folders for each of those categories as well. That's where I'd upload all of my pictures and video if I have any. After I've set up my categories, I might add a whole bunch of articles. So the overview of Joomlaville, uh, the location, and our history. Under attractions, I might add articles for the museum, the zoo, and the aquarium. Under festivals, New Year's, Mother's Day, and Independence Day, and then under transportation, the train station, bus station, and airport. Joomlaville is a little bit bigger than Drupal, than uh, sorry, than uh, Dillsboro. Yeah, where do I live? I just spent the last two days teaching Drupal, so I apologize if I say Drupal a couple of times. You'll you'll understand. Uh, then Dillsboro. So we categorize and then we add these articles, and then we show them using the menu system. Now, there are three basic menus to show articles. And this is, this is kind of the way it works. You can have a single article. So in your menus of your website, you can have a menu item that goes to one article. Uh, more often than not, that might be the About Us page, right? One article, one menu, that's pretty simple. Or the Contact Us page. You also have the ability to create blog layouts. Now they call it a blog layout because it kind of looks like a blog. You can have multiple columns. You can have intro text, the introductions to your articles, uh, more like a news site would be. Uh, and you can format that any way you want. You can have a whole bunch of articles that show the whole article, a whole bunch of articles that just show the introduction with a read more and the image. Uh, and a whole bunch of links at the bottom with all of the navigation. You can make that one column, two column, three column, 20 column. I've never seen that 20 column one. That would be for a monitor that's about the wide as this room. Usually one or two columns. Uh, and you have that flexibility. So that's the second kind of menu item that you have. You have a single article menu item, a blog category blog menu item, and you have a category list uh, menu item. The only time I generally use the list or uh, menu item is for an FAQ style page where it just lists all the articles in that category that are frequently asked questions, stuff like that. Um, if you had, for instance, an academic site, a school site, and each professor had their own page, 
you might have a, a listing of all the professor, um, professors by alphabetical order, and that would be a, possibly a category list page as well. Uh, you'd have to think that through um, for yourself. When it comes to formatting your articles, Joomla has some great resources. This is the, uh, the formatting that comes out of the box, what's called a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. Um, it's pretty much the first thing I replace every time I install Joomla, uh, because this is uh, inadequate at best. The one that I always install is called JCE, the Joomla Content Editor, and uh, it's really, really awesome. If you want to get a great insight to that, uh, I did a course, a whole section, uh, a whole course on JCE, and I take you through how to, uh, all the best ways to use it. And again, you all get a free month at OS Training, so if you've got time, that's one of the video series I encourage you to watch, because JCE out of the box is pretty powerful, but boy, when you start digging into it and create some user profiles, and then just allowing certain people to use certain profiles based on their access to your site, it gets really, really powerful. Uh, this is the, this is all of the uh, things and I rip about half of them out when I give a, a site to somebody because we really don't want them changing the font to Comic Sans Serif now, do we? No. So I, I pull out a bunch of that kind of stuff. And I, I show you how to do that in the tutorials. But the image manager and the link manager in JCE is worth taking the 10 seconds it takes to install. Uh, because it allows you to link to other content in your site using a little drop-down nav. Same thing with the image manager. It's just really, really slick, highly recommended extension, and I'll talk more about that in the next hour. So that's Joomla. Uh, as easy as one, two, three, the introduction, the installation, and the content. Let me uh, flip over to, my, to a live site, and boy, that's really tiny, so let me see if I can blow that up. Okay, so this is the site that I created that, uh, that little video with that I showed you. Um, what I'm, my goal in these sessions is to talk for about 40 minutes and then answer questions for the rest of the time. So start thinking about the questions you might have based on what we've talked about so far. Um, if I come across to the content tab, I have the article manager, category manager, featured articles. And in Joomla, featured articles are the ones that go to the front page of your website if you want. You don't have to do that, but if you want, you can set that up. Uh, and then, of course, the media manager, which I suggest the best, best practice there would be to create all of the folders that match your categories. So if I come down to my category manager, this is a site that has all the sample data installed. So let me show it to you real quickly. And that's uh, let's just, sorry about that, let me go back to the default template here real quickly. There we go. And so this is the J3 demo. This is all of the sample data that was installed. Uh, and let me explain what this is doing. I have a menu here on the right-hand side. That's actually the main menu. Your menus can appear anywhere you want on your site. Those are called module positions. And I'll talk more about that uh, as we go in the third session, about the difference between your content area and your module area. But the layout of this, this is the default template. It just comes with Joomla out of the box. And the front page here is a blog layout of the featured articles. So again, if I want to have certain articles on my home page, I can just call them, make them featured, and they'll appear if I use that kind of a menu. So in the back end, when I look at the categories I've got, you'll notice that I have a lot of categories under sample data, and these are all subcategories, and each subcategory is defined by the little dash. So the sample data has a subcategory of Joomla, which has a subcategory called extensions, which has a subcategory called components and then another one called modules, and under modules then you can see all of those categories. The value in creating categories then is for content layout and organization of your Joomla website. I know that looks overwhelming at this point, 
But think about your own content, or think about a simple um, Joomlaville-style news site, and you realize that the categories don't have to be this extravagant. Really, it's about your content. But this is the first step in organizing your site. So I add my categories as simply as clicking New. And in Joomla 3, it looks like this. It's pretty simple. I can add a title. Uh, let's call it uh, Sports. And I click. I can add a little description in here. This is the sports blog. And I can click Save and New. So now I've just created a top-level new category on my Joomla website. And now I'm going to click and say Hockey. You'll notice over on the right, I've got the parent. So I can choose where this fits in to my overall structure. Joomla 3 has a tagging system as well, kind of like WordPress tags. It's an open taxonomy of categorization or uh, additional tagging, and that's really helpful for your users. When you tag an article in Joomla, it usually, it always creates a link, and you can just click on that tag, and it will show you all the articles on your site that have been tagged with that, content, with that tag. All the articles that have been tagged with that, yes, you get it. I can add a note. Sorry? So that's easy to use, right? Yes. So I can uh, choose the parent here and come straight down and choose sports and click save and new. And I can continue on adding my categories just that simply. And again, if I've planned well, what I usually do is I have a whiteboard in my office. I would just write my categories up on the whiteboard, sit there with my laptop and hammer that out. It's actually really simple to do. Save a new, save a new, save a new. I can even reorganize my categories later on the categorizing on the uh, main window here. If I forget to put a category in a subcategory properly, I can actually um, change and batch process a whole bunch of categories and move them into the right spot. So there's a lot of really neat tools in the back end here. So that's categorization. To add an article is just as simple. I come over to my article manager, and now I can add a new article. Will Toronto win the Stanley Cup? Yeah, in your dreams. They haven't won it since 67. There's no reason they're going to win it this year. Um, and I choose the category. I scroll down. I find the hockey category. I can determine whether that's featured. And if I said featured, it would immediately appear on the home page. The access is public, and I'll talk about that during the third hour. And of course, I've, I can add all kinds of stuff here, uh, as well as some images. I can also, in Joomla, to say, when do I want this article to publish? When do I want it to stop publishing? Uh, this is a really neat feature of Joomla because it allows me to customize my, my site without actually having to stay up at midnight Saturday night to unpublish that article. So I just say, start publishing now. By default, it will start publishing now. I can add a finish date in there. I can also add a modified date, although Joomla will track that for me, so I don't need to worry. And what's key here, I can put in description and keywords for each article that I add, and I can't strongly more suggest that enough. Keywords not as important anymore for Google, but description certainly is. Um, if I have multiple authors, I can also select the author for this particular blog item. And again, that's just depending on your site. I can even have uh, content rights and external reference right there that would appear in my, the bottom of my article if I wanted. So with each article I add, there's the content tab, the publishing tab. I can add introductory and uh, images and full link, uh, full article images. The intro image appears on a little teaser layout. The full image appears when you're actually looking at the article. And again, you can add those and float them left or right. Please add alt text when you do. I can also add some external links or internal links that would appear at the bottom of the article. And then this screen is actually quite scary because Joomla has a gazillion options that you can set up for just about anything. 
So let me introduce this, and then I'm going to stop and take questions. In Joomla, there are global options that you set. How is the article going to be displayed? Is the title going to be a link? Am I going to show the author? Am I going to show the date? Am I going to show the intro images? Uh, if it's a blog layout, is it going to be two columns, three columns, four columns by default? Uh, all of the options for all of the articles are set at the global level. But then you can customize that at the menu level when you show an article. And you can actually customize it even further at the article level. So for some crazy reason, I didn't want to show the title for this article when somebody was reading it. That's pretty silly. But I could come in here to options and say, hide the title. I don't know why I do that, but I could. And all of those things can be set at the global level, the menu level, and the actual article level as well. So you have really granular control over your content. When I click Save, I've categorized, I've added, and then finally, I'm going to show by going to Menus, Main Menu, and add a new menu item. And in this case, I'm just going to link straight to that article. Hockey News. I click Select, and it asks me, well, what kind of menu do you want to create? And the great thing about Joomla, every feature you add, this list gets bigger, so you're never fumbling around for the kind of show step or menu you want to add. Click on articles. I click on a single article. And then Joomla says, well, which article would you like to link to? And I can just search for Stanley. Click on that article and click save and close. And immediately on my front page, I have a link right there to my hockey news. So categorize, add, and show. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's the basic, and that's how we add content to our Joomla site. Step number one, planning. <coughs> Step number two, install. Step number three, start adding your content. It's as easy as one, two, three. Maybe you don't feel that way at the moment, but hopefully by the end of the day, you will. Questions? You mentioned uh, on the installation that on the uh, bitmapping, yeah. that you're limited to only working one site? I, I think you are. Um, I've not played with Bitnami that, mo that much, but from what I've experienced in my install, yeah, you're limited to one installation of Joomla. That's, that's why I prefer MAMP. Right. Yeah, or for you. WAMP, yeah. We have tutorials at OS Training in the Joomla beginner class on how to install and set up Joomla on MAMP and WAMP, both on your Mac and your PC. It doesn't work in Linux, so you're, you're either a Windows person or a Mac person, and you're good to go. It does not work on an iPad. Sorry, you can't install Joomla on, an, on your iPad as a desktop. But you can certainly build a Joomla website on your iPad if it's hosted somewhere else. I actually had somebody do that a few weeks ago in a class. They couldn't get a laptop in time, so they brought their iPad, and I thought, I don't know if this is going to work or not. We had our own server set up, and sure enough, they, they made it through the class on their iPad. I was pretty impressed. Any other questions this morning? Yes, sir. Um, usually when you install the Joomla, they ask you if you want the sample settings. Yes. That's, that's a great question. You can, uh, there's a button in the installation process that says, what sample data do you want to install? And if you just say no sample data, nothing will be installed. If by chance you use like the one click method, then you would actually have to go through your site, unfortunately, and you would have to manually delete all of the, article, all of the articles first, all of the categories next, and then all of the menus. And to do that, it's actually quite simple. If I change the filtering here to, ah, let's see, we're having an issue with the screen. Well, I can just click, click all, and click trash. So I can go through that. And to delete all the sample data out of a site would probably take you five, six minutes. Uh, another way of doing it is there's a really neat extension called OS Content and it's a free from OS training, you can install that and you can mass delete all the content out of articles with a couple of clicks. 
So it's actually kind of scary. Don't leave that on a site that other people have access to the back end on. But you can generate content very quickly and you can delete content very quickly using OS content. Sir. Sorry, kind of a basic question, but categories yes. may or may not relate directly to the main That's correct. They may or may not. More often than not, they do. Uh, and if you, you know, if you start to think through the content of your site, generally speaking, if you've got a category called news, you're going to have a menu item called news. But here's the trick. You can have a category with, called news with a 20 subcategories. And you can still access every single article in all of those categories from one menu item called news. Because a category blog can post all of the subcategory articles in any order you want. Publication date, title, author, from A to Z or Z to A, or as we say in Canada, Z, eh? Um, that was another joke. Thank you so much. So you've got a ton, a gazillion options for how your menus put your data onto the onto the page, um, sorted pretty much any way you want. Yeah. Certainly. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Uh, and using other extensions that, and I don't want to get too far ahead to kind of blow your mind, but uh, you can ins you can insert other you can insert articles into other articles, and build massive articles that are actually built out of several other articles very easily. So, for instance, if you wanted a media page but you didn't want a media menu you could actually insert all the media articles into one massive big article. Now, that's not the way I'd do it normally, but you can. The scary part with Joomla is you can probably do it. Should you is another question, right? But you could probably do pretty much anything you want there. That's a great question. Thanks. Yes? Yeah. So if I come back into my, if I go back into my hockey article, and I've got to search for it here. If I come across to tags and say hockey, uh, Stanley Cup, Toronto, and hit save, I come back over to my website, and here are my tags. Now, the way, the, yeah, sorry, let me blow that up for you. Down here. This is one big honking screen, isn't it? <laughs> now, this is managed by your template. How these appear and where they're placed is managed by your template, right? So if I go ahead now and click on one of those, if I click on Toronto, or as we say in Canada, Toronto, this is a listing of all the articles tagged with Toronto. Basically, right. It's a, it, it, and now again, with this theme or template, uh, that's the way they're put out there. You can actually work with some template overrides. It's not hard to do to actually include the teaser or the intro text there and an image, things like that. But yeah, it'll be a listing of all of the articles uh, from that are tagged in publication date order, which again, you can change. Tagging is brand new in Joomla 3. Uh, not a lot of people have started using it yet, even though it's been around in WordPress forever. But the implementation of tagging in Joomla, I think, is really cool. Um, because, uh, again, it, it, it shows you right away what tags are already there. And so it's harder to make a typo, say hockey, H-O-K-C-E-Y, which would be a new tag. It's harder to do that because as soon as you start typing hockey, it's going to show up. And you can just click on it instead, which is a better tagging system than a, some of the other CMSs I won't mention. Okay, tagging is a way. Tagging is a way of just of adding quick links like this to your site that allow people to visually see common threaded kinds of content. So if I have a whole bunch of articles about the different things about Toronto on my site, 
I can tag them with the word Toronto, and then you just click on Toronto, and every article about Toronto will just show up in a list. So there's a repository where all the tags show up? Yes. Yes. So, okay, so if I come back into this article real quickly, we're just about out of time for this first session. That's okay. You're all staying for the next one, I'm sure. Um, so I can see them here, but I can also manage them in the components area, which is, I'm going to talk about next. There's all of the tags that are in the component, that are in tags. So I can create them on the fly, or I can manage them from here. One of the things with Joomla, you can say you're allowed to add them on the fly, or you're not, which is my preference, by the way. So I don't make typos. And my content editors can't put new ones in that have uh, you know, the wrong spelling of things. So you can actually set this up in the options area to say you can't add them on the fly. You can only pick what I tell you, which is a far better way of using tags, in my opinion. So we're out of time for this first session. Let's take a five-minute break. We're going to come back and do uh, extensions next, or Joomla features, which is actually a really fun session. I'm going to kind of combine a 45 uh, extensions into 45 minutes. It's going to be a whirlwind. But don't worry, I'm going to give you everything you need. So all right, let's take a break, grab a coffee, come on back in about five minutes. <laughs>